So a couple weeks ago we had our this is after the end video and I talked about Constantine Sodi and I figured today we should jump in here. We should play a little bit as Constantine. Apparently he's got like five, six events uh, in the game and I'd like to check those out. So I figured we would spend some time here this morning and we would just uh, jump on in there. I guess it's the afternoon for y'all, but for me it's the morning, so shut up. All right, so this is Constantine. Following the death of much of his family at the hands of the foolish Bruce of Bruce, Constantine Sodi swore oaths of vengeance. Gathering many of his half-siblings under his banner and mustering a grand army of ambitious Upers and Northlanders, Constantine brought war to Northern Ontario, claiming Bruce for his own. Though the erstwhile lord escaped, the ambitious Constantine now stands with a bloodied and vicious army at his disposal, ready to carve out his own domain and rival, that, and rival the fame of his great father, the legendary Viking Albert Sodi. But it won't be too easy. Though his siblings stand at his side for now, they too have ambitions. So as we can see here, we've got this beautiful, beautiful map after the end, of course. And we are starting off here as just the chiefdom. I believe it's not even a duchy, is it? It's a county title. So we just have a county. I believe we can conquer duchies automatically, just out the gate, which is what I'm going to do um, to get things rolling here. Because we have an army of 3417, and that is uh, obviously what we need to do. So first, of course, always you check out your alliances. That's what we're going to do. Now, I, now, if you look, Constantine is gay. But we're going to have to we're gonna have to figure this out, right? We're gonna need alliances. We're gonna need alliances. Or we could embrace it. We can embrace his 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 self. Oh, a giant, brave, calm, zealous woman. Oh man. I mean, that's that's some pretty strong traits there. And we also have robust. Ooh, that would be that would be boosted. That would be boosted. Let's do that. We want we want to have robust children. Obviously, we'll go down the martial focus. We'll do strategy. He's got stalwart leader, but I'm just going to do... Uh, well, actually, chivalry in this one does give plus three to prowess. We'll do chivalry. And uh, we're not going to mess with city-state government yet. My sister can also marry. Let's hold off on the sister marrying. Let's 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 uh, make an alliance with my player heir and half-brother. And then my other half-brother. So that they can't later on tell me that they hate me. We have one men at arms. Oh, look at this. Linemen? Is that what they're called? That is so cool. So he's got linemen, men at arms. We can create a new one. Um, we should probably definitely get Ongers, or not Ongers, Mangonels. Get a few Mangonels to increase siege time. And with a little bit of this extra capital, probably go down here into Port Elgin and make, usually I like to do forts, but it looks like they re he really desperately needs some money. So we're gonna do logging camps to start off here. And yeah, it looks like we also have a Holy Order, the Northern League. Oh my god. Look at this. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off here. We're just going to jump on in there and we're going to go. We're going to do this. We're going to conquer a duchy. We're going to get us a duchy just right off the bat. We'll raise all right here. And we'll just run on in there. Now, the story takes a second to kick off. So, oh my god, look at his helmet. Oh, he's got a football helmet. That's so sick. But the story takes a second to kick off. I messed with this like very briefly just to see how it goes. Basically, you have to wait for it to pop up. There's like a disclaimer, which I think is cool. Apparently, it has some pretty like difficult themes. So we'll, we'll be messing with that here as well. As you can see, he's got child of a concubine. He's been disinherited by his dad, who was killed by Count Bruce, who is is still alive. This person's Marshall. So we are conquering them immediately so that's what that is what we're gonna do his primary heir is this guy this is his child i don't want to i want to try to fight him in battle hopefully that would be cool that'd be a real cool story arc for us also an fyi we are viking faith vikings believe that the world is a struggle full of victory and defeat that culminates in ragnarok in order to ensure success during the next ragnarok vikings have developed a culture driven by those who are the strongest in their societies vikings spend their whole lives pushing themselves to their limits in order to prove to high coach thor <laughs> <laughs> they are worthy of joining him in Valhalla fame. All right, what is Valhalla fame? Hold on. Uh, for the indomitable spirit of a true warrior. Okay, Valhalla fame is the most prestigious of Viking afterlives as it serves as the home of esteemed warriors and leaders. Each player is picked by Thor himself for their prowess. Oh, they think they're like on a team. Each player has their own space dedicated to their achievements and strengths, both on and off the battlefield. The Valhalla fame will be responsible for the defense of the world tree when the next Ragnarok begins. The world tree is, I'm assuming, Yggdrasil. That's fairly similar, I guess. What are their benefits? Let's just look. No sacrifice too great. All-star roster. Oh, title creation cost is minus 50%. Holy sh... That's amazing. Direct vassal opinion, however, is minus 10. Terror of the Lakes. 
I lost the ability to raid. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Very nice. Male dominated. They like disloyalty. That's actually quite interesting. Um, they value bravery, gregariousness, ambition, stubbornness, vengefulness. They're theocratic. They have a Northern League Holy Order, which I believe is held by us. This is their head of faith. That's interesting. There's a couple faiths in this game that have holy orders that are their head of faith. Alright, Constantine's studies of Enchain has some disturbing themes involved. These include, but are not limited to, explicit descriptions of homophobic actions, graphic depictions of traumatic events, and abuse. If this is something that would potentially have an adverse effect on your mental health, we have prepared an alternative path which still allows you to gain all available modifiers and experiences, much of the content within the event chain. But we're going to proceed with the full event chain. This is obviously the disclaimer for not only the playthrough, but for this video. If this is something that would make you uncomfortable, you can freely click away. I will not be offended, uh, and we're going to proceed. All right, we're going to station besiegers, and then we're going to route backwards. We can also, I probably, well, no, they're probably Viking. Oh, no, they're not. They're not Vikings. We can probably call our Holy Order just on the free. And we'll get our Head of Faith in there. Dang, dude, they get so many troops to start. I am stirred awake by yet another nightmare. The one of Albert shouting at me when he found Hank. Albert shouting at me when he found Hank. Oh, my God, his son. Oh, when he found Hank and I stowed away on a ship, the dream then shifts to a snow-covered clearing in the woods. My father forces me to kill my lover, lest I be left to the wolves. Oh my god. Uh, is it? Does it say killed by me? Oh my god, Jesus. It's just a nightmare. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. The cool breeze off Lake Huron brushes against my skin as I walk through the market. My bandana is tucked firmly into my pants. I'm here on the guise of inspecting the port, yet that is not my real goal. This is this becomes realized as a man who's a few years my elder comes up and taps on my shoulder. The first thing I notice is the warmth and boldness that radiates out from him. We quickly hit it off, and I lead him to the hole in the wall of a bar that I've been secretly fostering since I arrived here. Mmm, so we can get Rackish? I mean, is there anything wrong with Rackish? Is Rackish, is Rackish, like, condemned? Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. So we have the option of just a fling of nothing more, or we can do this man feels like something special. Is Paul LeBeau any good? He's he's okay. He's compassionate. He's a mastermind. Let's let's make him our soulmate. Or my lover at the very least. Nice. Amidst the chaos that engulfs the hills of Gulf, I attempt to catch my bearing ahead of me. Bruce charges Oh no, wait, hold on. Oh okay, so Bruce Bruce died in battle. Holy shit. Our pikeman Harry him relentlessly and it is clear he is all but spent as other men drop like flies around him in mere moments clarence marshal of chieftain constantine determinedly charges forward holding his abs aloft easily overcoming the remaining strength of bruce and delivers the coup de gras i can't help but grin at the thoughts of bruce has died fighting my wars this will buoy my spirit for days my hero i shall send clarice and iris dude hell yeah absolute exactly what i wanted to happen i'm so proud of you guys Oh, a shining light in the dark world. Paul and I are walking through the halls of my keep, but suddenly Alvin insistently pulls me into a side room. He states that he knows what I'm doing and that Alphonse would be incredibly disappointed in me. Who's Alphonse? My great-grandfather. After all, as he always used to say, good things come to those who shoot straight. Jesus Christ. Alvin then continues to berate and yell at me before finally storming off. I am now alone in this room, yet as much as I want to cry, not a single tear comes out. After a while, Paul sheepishly enters the room with a bruise on his face, no doubt from Alvin. He then presents me with a box while saying, I want to give this to you on your birthday. But I feel like you need it more now. Thank you so much, Paul. I'll treasure it always. I'm going to be true to who I am. Paul and I lay down for bed. He typically sleeps in the servants' quarters, but tonight is different. After all, there's a risk of Alvin exposing us anyway. We blow out the, the lantern and kiss each other. Good night. Good night, my dearest. Jesus. What is this? An agati breast, an agate brass necklace. Okay, a lot of words. We're reading a lot here. I hear Lucia calling out to me, my mother. 
As I am pulled out from the frigid waters of Lake Superior, relieved, she rushes over to me and hugs me tight. I had fallen overboard as a November storm rolled through. As I am in her embrace, she says, Thank Polaris, you are safe, my child. I don't know what I would have done if you had drowned. I asked, Who's Polaris? Is he like Thor? She responds, No, my child. Polaris is more than him. Polaris is the calming light of the Northern Star, guiding sailors to safety for as long as anyone can remember, before suddenly being cut off by Albert. Oh, don't listen to her, son. Polaris is of no use to us, for it is Thor who guides us through our lives. Now run along, Constantine. A voice I have not heard in a long time. Now, what is the lakeshore? Oh, they have reincarnation, beauty of the lakes, and they have lighthouse keepers. And they are allowed to be same-sex relations. I see where this is going. I see where this is going. We're going to be able to convert. I find myself in a f hull of a boat hidden behind some barrels with Hank. We had snuck aboard as Albert and his raiding party set off to find who know to who knows where. Okay. We plan to sneak off the boat whenever it docked uh, at a far off port, yet there was not to be the fate of this journey. I once again find myself in the god's forsaken clearing. The axe weighs heavy in my hand. No, not again. Not again. Oh my god. This is this is quite a rapid event chain, I must say. Suddenly, some of the other forces compels me. I begin running, running away from it. I don't know what it is I'm running to, but whatever it is, it's the very thing I'm running from. Before too long, I find myself stopping. I clutch the necklace that Paul had given to me when I see a man step out from behind a tree. He says, son, if you don't know where to start, go back to the beginning. Who the hell is this guy? I somehow instinctively know that this is Alphonse, the founder of the Sodi chain. He reassures me and explains that to shoot straight does not mean to follow a rigid path set by your upbringing. Rather, it means to be strong, to stick to your guts, and to never let anyone, not even your own family, tell you how to live your life. That is how you shoot straight. Alphonse Sodi. Brave and just, brilliant strategist, giant Herculeum. Hell yeah. Come to those who shoot straight. To challenge fate, I find myself awake once more next to Paul. He stirs awake a few moments later. I begin to tell him everything that happened in my dream, from Lucia to Hank to Albert, and the encounter with Alphonse. It is then that I realize I do have the power to change my fate. The only question is, what path should I take? I assume this is where you decide his ultimate fate. Should convert to Polaris. Although he is going to lose probably these Ducal Conquests, unless they have it in here. Blitz Tactics? What do they get? His Viking probably shuns it, right? Yeah, it's shunned. Or I can forge a new idea. I mean, that would be that would feel a bit like running away from who I am. Whereas this one, I could be forging a new idea of what it means to be, you know, a Viking. Close family may convert with you. Vassals may convert with you. Oh, that's a tough one. And then we would also lose our holy order. So what is what does Children of the Lakes get? So they're theocratic. They believe in reincarnation. They believe in the beauty of the lakes. Enables the construction of lighthouses and temple holdings. Oh, grand lighthouses. That's cool. Um, do they have any bonuses though? Because I'm pretty sure the Vikings have like, yeah, they get all-star roster. Rulers have a conquest cast a spell. Daring dude, I, I kind of wanted to form a kingdom in this one too. We're gonna we're gonna forge a new idea of what it means to be a Viking. Oh wait, hold on, here we go. We can reform the faith with. Oh, I have to wait. Did it? Nice. Bruce, Con Conquest of the Duchy of Heronia. Alright, let's expand. Now we have a decent amount of territory. Keepers of the Tetramorphic Peace. That is another one of the really cool fates, actually. We Shall Not Sleep. They have peacekeeping missions, and they do have Pursuit of Power. They have same-sex marriage accepted. Ooh! You know what? I'm gonna convert to Keepers of the Tetramorphic Peace. I arrange for the Legion Chaplain to come to my court. With the fate of my immortal soul in question, I can only pray that I have made the right decision. Metaphysics aside, I take comfort in knowing that the majority of my realm stands united under they who shall not grow old. God, what a fuck. It's such a cool faith. A true tetramorphic realm. Glory to the tetramorph. Oh my god, dude. Hell yes. Hell yes. Although I think that means we lose our holy order, which is fine. We still have a ton of troops. I don't really care. I can usurp the duchy, which we will do for 250. I am now a mighty high chief. So I have a claim on the Kingdom of Superior, which is... Oh, it's over there. What does that do? Conquer Duchy. That is so bizarre. So what does this do? Oh, we have an alliance with them. That's my brother. Oh, and that's my player. I see, I see, I see. Okay. So what is what kingdom would this be? The kingdom of Ontario. 
you need to have two duchy titles and have four, 17. Well, let's make a new kingdom. I mean, we're, we're already a new faith. We're the tetramorphic Upers. We still have a huge army. I mean, relatively speaking. And I think he still does get to keep his, yeah, he gets to keep his Chieftain Constantine's host. It says eight years to siege that, so we're going to have to start sieging these things first. Station besiegers, and then this army can go south. Beautiful. We're just gonna try and form this kingdom. We're the keepers of peace, so naturally it means I have to attack everybody immediately. God, it's too easy. And now I have Toronto, which I'm going to make my new capital. Gorgeous. God, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. And now we have Cien Plaza, which is nestled within Toronto. The Cien Plaza is a massive walled bazaar that boasts beautiful minarets, intricate mosaics, and a vibrant market square. It is central. A towering minaret is inspired by a long-gone sky-piercing tower that is said to have graced the city skyline before the end. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. We're gonna convert faith, and we'll promote culture here as well. And we'll have him work on York. I can create the Duchy of Grand Toronto, or Greater Toronto, not Grand Toronto, I'm sorry. So we need only 10 more to make the Kingdom of Ontario, which I'm going to do. Um, that shouldn't actually be that hard. We, no, no, actually, you know what, we can, we can marry you to them. Yeah. Pursuit of power, not rightful liege, cultural acceptance, doctrine. Keepers of Tetramorphic Peace is evil, modified by doctrines. There, there is that problem. They're, the keepers of Tetramorphic Peace definitely have some, um, some strong opinions on everyone. But that's why I'm converting everyone. That's, I'm helping you. You don't know what you need until I give it to you. We should probably raid soon. I think actually, yeah, we can still do that because we're a Uper. I think they get raid options. They might. We actually might have gotten rid of that. We may have lost that with um, the conversion, which is fine. No, it says we can raid. It actually does. Oh, look at that. Well, we'll do that. We'll raid all, all up on this. Go crazy with raid. I got nicknamed the Lion. Dude, that's sick. They call you High Chieftain Constantine the Lion. Is it not spectacular? It is. My wife and chieftess. Wow. Look at her little hat under her helmet. That is so nice. My wife is pregnant. Wow. What a good, what a good, I, this is such a good timeline for Constantine. He got to be who he is. He got to convert away from the hateful faith and now he's a tetramorphic hater. <laughs> They're still very similar. Well. There we go. Can you serve this duchy? Can create this duchy of Greater Toronto, which we should do because that's my now du jour. That's my primary title, I think, right? No, let's make let's make this my primary. I am now, yeah. We are Greater Toronto. I'm not going to be a sixer. That sounds whack, to be honest with you. My newborn son, Constantine. Oh wow, and he got robust. Hell yeah, you will be also strong in the ways of war, my boy. Get absolutely wrecked, kid. Jesus Christ. All right, we're just gonna chill on our border. Do we have anybody we can ransom? I can pardon my vassal, Director Grafton. I'll get you a pardon. We built... I believe we built the logging camps now. Hell yeah. I would like these wars to end so I could go raiding. Dog, I've been helping you the whole time. What are you talking about? Like, go siege Green Bay or something. Win. Alright, there you go. Fucking relax now. This guy should not be a king, considering he's literally just this weak little baby. Also them, too. Both of them are ripe for the picking. Oh, we got 150 gold. Look at that. So we can create a new duchy. I feel like I should be able to usurp this, right? What does it say? Oh, I only have 10 of the 17 counties required to usurp it. Hmm. I'm gonna have to just take it from him, I assume. Yeah, we'll do we'll do those two next, and then that'll be that'll probably be it for this one. I think that was his whole story arc. It's not very long, but I, I think it's really cool. And we're working on Toronto, which is a great city to have, I must say. Um, manor houses, ooh, that is a good one. Farms and fields is always great. Barracks are always great. Let's see, we got a lot of options here. I do usually like stables. Increases it, it increases like, um, the holding taxes by four percent. Greater Library, Royal Palace, Greater Lighthouse. Oh, there you go. Oh my god. 
Holy shit, increases it by 12%? Holy fuck. Sorry, don't mean to swear, but Jesus Christ. Let's do a trade port, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's Toronto, right? I don't know if they have a Did they trade there? I don't know anything about Toronto. My... Uncle and rival has died. I will send you flowers. And, and thanks. What? My court He's crestfallen for over a week now. It's a fifth heavy, despondent sigh of the day that finally gets me to gentle inquiry as he says, I'm so lonely. All I want is a special someone. I will help you. You do that, my lord? You really help me? I recall Clint's face lighting up as I agreed, somewhat warily, to help him find love. I'm not exactly the most versed in playing matchmaker, though, so it's more with hope and certainty that I set forth in the milling crowds in Toronto to seek out a potential flame. I scanned the market square taking in several likely candidates, but for Clint's sake, I should really be looking for someone who suits him. Someone, uh, let's see, oh god. He's wrathful, arrogant, and deceitful. How about devout? Devout and fervent is probably the best move. As I continue my search, a figure catches my eye. She is listening intently to a preaching, preacher haranguing the crowd. It sounds like the ravings of a lunatic to me, but the listener's eyes burn bright with fervor, and she nods enthusiastically along with the religious ramblings. It only takes an invitation to my court and the promise of a suitor to get the flattered and excited woman Alana as her name was revealed to be in tow. Triumphantly bursting through the doors, I spot Clint engaging in his usual listless moping on the other side of the court. Clint turns to me expectantly, eyes shining with hope. Clint, come here. There's no spark. God! Holy word for duchy. Or, dang, dude, it only costs a hundred gold or a hundred prestige to do the duchies. That is so nuts. It's too late to run, my guy. I'm gonna take this castle and then I'm gonna take them cheeks. Greetings, I have heard of your disputes with that loathsome Scully and Hannah, a most contemptual excuse for a woman. Given our mutual friendship, I'm sure we'll get along, friend. I eagerly await the opportunity to discuss this further. I am a friend with this guy because he hates my my grandmother. I love that my grandmother is my rival. I mean, it makes sense. Poor Constantine. I also found it... I mean, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I found it super heartwarming that they were like, it's not about being, you know, what was the word, uh, straight. When they've said being a straight shooter, they're like, that doesn't mean you that doesn't mean you have to be straight, my dude. It just means, like, don't be a dick. And he's like, oh my god, you're right. I, I shouldn't be a dick. <laughs> and now he's, you know, he's happy. I'm very, I'm very much pleased with how that storyline progressed. I know it's short, but I'm, I'm really tickled by it. Oh, my son loves me unconditionally. That's really sweet. Can I not raid you? Let's go there. Let's see what happens with this. That one's 21 gold, so hopefully I can actually raid that. We'll do a little we'll do a little raiding here. Getting everything out of the way. There we go. Also, I love that our son is look at him, he's already jacked. This man is gonna be freaking enormous. He's curious, he asks where babies come from. You know, obviously. Who knows? I don't even know. Couldn't tell you, son. It's a mystery even to me. Only the sinners engage in such activities. And you aren't a sinner, are you, boy? I would say 88 is a pretty solid amount, to be fair. Already. Already a really good amount. I think I might just go home. How much prestige does that give us? Oh, we lose a claim. We're still allowed to do it, but now oh, it's interesting. It kind of bumps me out. All right, let's see. We have one that goes away in 15 months. That's with them. This one goes away in 28 days, so we're gonna j jump on them, like, immediately. I'm not waiting for him. Yeah, there we go. It's gone. Oh, no, is it not gone? There it goes. Oh, and you can only do one per lifetime. That would technically give me the Kingdom of Ontario, would it not? I mean, I can afford it. Why not? Dude's got so much prestige. My counselor Alvin died. Under mysterious art, he got murdered. He got murdered. I'm gonna send him this gift. It's not necessarily worth it, but I don't. Re I really don't want him to murder me now that we've come so far. Holy shit, we're already done. The bustling of an inn, a fine sight, or calm evening after a long day of training, my tinker is knocked out of my hands by a mercenary reeling from a blow, and on all hope of relaxation drains away on the floor along with my cider. Please, Lord, Helgi Stugs have been drinking my dry without paying for days, and they're fighting, scaring the staff and the guests. 
They're too drunk to be a real threat. This will be over quickly. I'm gonna kick their ass. Oh, we're done, actually, yeah. Oh, see, I still do need to take the rest of those to sure lands. I mean, you gotta say, Constantine's pretty badass, dude. He, he's just claiming these places, like, indiscriminately. Dude does not care. So we need three more. That's 15. That is 16, 17. Yep, let's do it. One. Two. And we'll take their capital. Be nice and breezy, beautiful, quick, over in a flash. We'll give all of this to somebody, and then we'll go to war with them. And then we'll have our greater, we'll have our Toronto or Ontario kingdom, and then you can just assume that he would continually blow up. He's forging his own legacy. Of course he has a claim on the superior kingdom or whatever the hell it's called. My wife is pregnant again? You know what, Constantine? He's really taking one for the team. He's like, I have to do this for the realm. I understand. I understand. This is an interesting thing, actually. So, when I made that video, the, um... I'm, I'm pausing here to tell you this. When I made that video, the this is after the end video, I... A lot of the characters actually got changed in the new update. They don't look the same as they did when I did that video or a couple other videos that I've done. I mean, like, the presidency is still similar. Um... The Holy Columbian Commonwealth is still similar, but other ones, they like, they, they updated them. I love Elias. He's so cool. I, I wish he was doing more. He's, <laughs> come on, buddy, you can do it. Take it over. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's interesting because I, I look back at some of those videos or some of the parts of that video and I'm like, dang, because one of them in particular, and I, I'm pretty sure I made a comment about this, but um, for House Beaten, the, their grandfather, Basil the Ir Irving Slayer, he looks totally different in the video. And I was like, dang it. I wanted, I almost wanted to like re-upload it, but I was like, it's, it doesn't matter. Let's give her a good tetramorphic. Dunkirkia? Belgica? Normana. Normana's, Normana's kind of a sick name. I'm not even going to lie to you right now. Let's also give her a war focus. We're a war family. Done. And disband. All right, sweet. And we can now make the Kingdom of Ontario in a little bit, very soon. Kingdom of Ontario, let's do it. As Patriarch, you have new duties and responsibilities. You will now be expected to regularly hold courts off of the disputes of the realm. We've read this all before. How Sodi now has a beautiful banner. Let them see their Patriarch. Let's hang the banner high behind my head. Hell yeah. I can vassalize this person. We'll make them have normal obligations. I don't even know who that is. Is it you? Oh my god. Dude, that's crazy. That's a huge person. Made it. I kind of want to take this, though, because I don't like this little gap here. I don't like that the lands don't touch, so we're going to do that really fast, because it's going to bother me. It's going to bother me. Just to, just to, just to appease myself, my, my brain, so that land do touchy. Vassal wants to clap cheeks. I'm sure. get after it. Isn't that my chaplain? Hell yeah. Ah, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel nice? And so my friends, we've reached the end of this one. Once again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed that story arc. I am curious to see what his other one would be, like if you did the not so graphic one. That's kind of messed up. I mean, he had a lover. His dad made him kill him. That's horrendous. And, you know, we ended up having a kind of a happy ending. Um, we ended up getting God, we have our lover, we got married, we have children, we've formed our own kingdom away from the one of the past. I would like to think that this is him moving forward with his own, you know, his own ambitions. I'm realizing I did not read the Tetramorphic Faith, um, so I'm actually going to do that right now. It's going to be in the same window, so you're not going to see it. You'll see it on screen, and I'm just going to slap it in here, you know because of the power of editing, but I'm just going to I'm gonna read that for you. So the keepers of the Tetramorphic Peace are the Tetramorphists, like other Veteronic Faiths, believe in a terrible war to end all, which was basically like a war that is a combination of all the great wars in history, which culminated in the death of Christ being killed in Flanders fields. Now, the war to end all has a distinctly World War I flavor. We're going to talk about this more in that video, but it's very interesting. But when Christ died, the, the unknown savior, as he is called, he released the Holy Spirit among the people to save themselves from themselves. Unlike other Veteronics, however, they believe their unknown savior was resurrected once more by the collective spirit and values of his believers, each called a face. These faces, one of the beaver for their diligence, the goose for their bravery, and the unicorn for their wise policy, the unknown savior himself became the fourth face of this being, represented peace and the people who saved him as he had saved them. 
Together, these four faces of peace became the Tetramorph, who rose up from the poppy fields, which the poppy fields formed after the Christ figure died. So he was bleeding, and poppies sprouted from his immaculate blood on the field of corpses and mud. And then that is sort of, that's a symbol of him now, which is why when you see the, the keeper of the Tetramorphic Peace has a poppy seed, or poppy flower in the middle. This faith is based heavily around Remembrance Day, if you're familiar with that. Again, we're going to talk about this in that video, but I'm trying to give you some context. Anyway, it rose to the poppy fields, which is also an ethereal plane. That it's their heaven of this faith. It's sort of like a place where you ascend to. To be with those who had sacrificed and continue to sacrifice their lives to bring and keep peace to this world. Very much enjoy the Veteronic faiths. They're very cool. They have peacekeeping missions. We shall not sleep in pursuit of power as their tenants. And they have some pretty interesting virtues. Again, we're going to talk about those later. Um, but I just thought I would read this off really quick so that you guys could get a little a better understanding of why I was so excited to switch to them. I find their faith so interesting that it's sort of this blend of remembrance of veterans as well as Jesus, not Jesus though, I'm sorry, Christ, specifically Christ, the second coming of Christ, but not Jesus. It was just a random unknown dude that nobody could recognize. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting to me, but yeah, I, there you go. And that's gonna be it for this one. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Constantine's little story here. I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's, it's apparently this is one of the more in-depth event chains as of right now. I, it, apparent, the mod's goal, as I said in that previous video, isn't to make these super common throughout the mod it's more about giving players the opportunity to forge their stories on their own um, whereas you know like a mod like god Herja focuses a lot on its internal story and lore and a lot of the characters revolve around that lore and they have sort of their own motivations that you can see rapidly expand throughout your playthroughs especially with somebody like Koist. but we're not talking about that this is after the end anyway yeah so this was Constantine Sodi. I hope you guys liked it if you'd like me to do anything else if there's any other story-based ones that you know of or that you'd like me to try I would happily do so. This one was a lot of fun, and I'm happy that I did it. But that's going to be for this one. I'm Sol. This has been another After the End video, and I will happily see you in the next one.